What a beast! <laughs> and there you have it guys, <laughs> a load of fish fingers. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me on what's a bit of an unusual day. I wasn't going to do a video today because the weather was just so terrible. It's been raining really hard and it's been really windy. A couple of friends though, Jamie and Pete, were keen to dive and it's a Saturday afternoon so we thought, hey, let's just go and give it a shot. And um, actually the weather's come good. The rain stopped, the wind has died right down now and uh, yeah, the sun is occasionally popping out from behind the clouds. So it's turning in to be quite a pleasant afternoon. And uh, I've dropped them on a couple of my very special spots as well. And they've done really well. So in just a minute, I'll show you what they've caught. They've caught some really cool stuff, really cool stuff. But um, I thought also I could use this as an opportunity just to uh, update you guys on the situation with my ear because I haven't been diving recently. Basically, uh, I suffered a reverse block. If you imagine the ear, you have your outer ear, your middle ear, and your inner ear. And your outer ear, which is basically your ear canal, is separated from your middle ear by your eardrum. So as you dive down, the pressure of the water pushes on your eardrum. You need to equalize by putting air uh, to, into your middle ear, between the eardrum and your outer ear. So what happened was I had a bit of a blocked eustachian tube, so I was struggling to equalize. I was struggling to get air into my middle ear and um, it kind of, I was at about 10 meters and it was really hard to equalize and perhaps I just forced it a little bit. The air went into my middle ear, but then uh, it couldn't escape too easily. So when I came to the surface, I had this positive pressure in my middle ear. The, the air wasn't escaping. Um, this positive pressure caused my eardrum to bulge outward. And doctor thinks that I got a small perforation in my eardrum as a result. So Joseph, um, it appears unfortunately you've um, got a little perforation of your eardrum, I'm afraid. So uh, there's a clear sign of some infection there and it's, it's come through the eardrum, but um, hopefully today's antibiotics should organize things okay for you. Uh, but you will be out of the water for for a number of weeks. Um, guidelines are probably six weeks, which is a little bit difficult to to hear. But look, we can we can take another look at you in a few weeks' time, see how it's going. Your ear canal is very very inflamed all the way around, and there's almost a little scabbed, crusty section of your ear canal. This is not actually your canal. Obviously, this is a photograph off off the internet, but just to demonstrate how infection can result in the eardrum rupturing. So antibiotics and some anti-inflammatories and unfortunately keeping your head dry for the yeah. time being. Yeah. So uh, needless to say, I'm being very, very careful. I don't want to risk doing any more damage to my ear. So it's been four weeks. I'm gonna do what the doctor said. I'm gonna leave it another two weeks um, because I really don't want to you know, risk doing any more damage. Um, it was extremely painful when uh, when I did have the small perforation. It got very infected. I couldn't sleep for three nights. Lots of ibuprofen. I've done two courses of antibiotics. So yeah, not particularly pleasant. And I would uh, urge anyone um, who's new to diving or, or any divers just to be really, really careful if you're at all congested, um, you know, be really, really careful about diving. Um, ideally don't, you know, wait until you can properly equalize and do that you know with no trouble so you know a little lesson that i've learned there you know your eardrum is really really delicate it's like millimeter or less less than that thin so you know you need to be so careful um, that you equalize gently and carefully but anyway i brought the boys out here they're having a great time on one of my favorite pinnacles here in south devon it's uh, absolutely awesome because it holds it holds everything. It holds crabs, lobsters, holds spiny lobsters and our standard lobster, uh, pollock, bass. It gets the mackerel swirling around it in the summer. It's it's just a fantastic little pinnacle. All good? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give Pete a camera and because this pinnacle is really amazing. It, it holds amazing stuff.
five or six down there. Five or six crawfish? Yeah. It's really lovely to see. It's amazing. I want uh, your crab story, please. Crab story? Yeah, yeah. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm really keen to hear how you got this crab peak from Crab Rock. Tell oh, us about your crab. Decent cock crab. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just uh, spotted him out the corner of my eye, right at the base of the cliff. Yeah. Where there's a little crack. Kind of sitting half out of it, was he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Looking fairly relaxed. Yeah. And surprisingly, didn't put up much of a fight when I when I grabbed him. So I thought. Yeah. Well, come I wouldn't want my fingers in there. I really wouldn't. That would do some serious damage, that boy. You certainly would. Yeah. <laughs> He's so angry. You know, I don't blame him at all, but it's going to be delicious. So, looking forward to eating that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, they're beauties, mate. Yep, pretty stoked. Really, really happy with that. Yeah. Nice school of reasonable sized pollock. <laughs> yeah, the sort of two, three kilo fish. What was the um, ground like down there? Uh, it was kind of broken sand and uh, and kelp, and these guys were just um, cruising around. Yeah, awesome yeah, fish. It's really nice. And um, one of them was in a bit of a gutter, yeah, a yeah. gully, just came up underneath it. Yeah. So, yeah, really nice. That's beautiful, really beautiful fish. Lovely spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to be in there myself, but yeah. very soon. And as I have mentioned before, Jamie's a, a Kiwi, so he's been diving over there for for many years and is now transferring his skills to, to the UK scene. How are you finding it? Since... Loving the seafood. Just yeah? It. It's oh, delicious. Of England? Yeah, love it. And it's how does it sort of compare to New Zealand? Because obviously... Um, well, today it's it's on a par. Yeah. It really is, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think I'll get the drone up and just show some of these incredible surroundings. So yesterday was a pretty awesome day with Jamie and Pete. I've just looked at some of the footage and I'm pretty happy that Pete managed to see a spiny lobster. That's pretty cool. Jamie was uh, kind enough to give me one of his pollocks. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make my really quick and lazy fish fingers, but children absolutely love them. So you need obviously your prime pollock, some breadcrumbs, um, mayonnaise, olive oil, filleting knife, and a tray that the fish fingers are going to go inside. So I like to make my first cut down the backbone from the tail and I find it's easiest to kind of visualize, look closely at the fins and visualize where that backbone is before you make your cut so you can get as close to the backbone as possible. You can see I actually went a bit um, too far over but when you've got down the backbone I like to shove my knife in and flick out to the tail. Next you want to skin the fillets by angling the knife and drawing it along the skin. So now I've got all my fish fingers ready. This is where it gets really, really lazy. I'm just going to bung them in the mayonnaise, put them in the breadcrumbs, chuck them in the oven for 10 minutes. 
it's all going to be done. I just want them all really coated in that mayonnaise. I'm just going to chuck them all in and you could do this with kind of egg wash and stuff like that but um, it takes a bit longer and sometimes I just need to get these fish fingers in the oven quickly for the children and they absolutely love them so it's all good. Okay let's get them in the breadcrumbs. Whoa! The mayo helps it all stick on. Crush oil. And there you have it guys, <laughs> a load of fish fingers made in 10 minutes. Now I'm just gonna chuck them in the oven at 180 for 10 minutes or so. And they go. They look good. Missy, 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 come on. Missy, hello. <laughs> daddy, daddy, daddy's What's going on? Right, um, hmm, we'll interesting. Save those for seconds, maybe 30 seconds. Okay. Hot. Yeah. Extremely yummy. What's going on, George? Cheese! Cheese! Haha, <laughs> good boy. <laughs> it's another foraging trip, don't you, Missy? <laughs> yeah. It's lovely to think that this fish was swimming about five miles from this house last night and it was caught in a very sustainable, selective way, and now it's on the dinner table. Well, literally, and it's delicious. And it's feeding the family. Thank you very much for um, joining me on another mission, and I hope it cleared up, you know, what was going on with my ear. It's feeling much better, so I cannot wait to be doing my own spearfishing soon. So it won't be long. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. <laughs>